All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekakadash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who rule well, that time in this word in truth and sincerity. Peace and sorry with the Salah I just want to make sure this is uh, all working. God, and the rest of the whole selected sincerely, believe, peace and mercy to you in your household. So I uh, just want to do this quick lesson, basically a uh, back to the basics type lesson uh, for newer comers, newer believers, male and female, um, concerning hell, the hell doctrine that you might hear of, you know, uh, circling Israel. If you're in the world, obviously, as we all were, hell was, and hell was, uh, that's a major doctrine, but that's a major doctrine, you know, among Israel right now, and I mean with, uh, Jakes, so-called Negroes, Latinos, North American Indians that know that they're Israelites, but yet uh, they, uh, they they bring in these damnable heresies. That's all that hell doctrine is, is a damnable heresy, That's right? Um, and uh, it's not it's not according to the scriptures. Now, what is according to the scriptures is reincarnation. The Holy Spirit is dealing with you to see it. So, I got a couple of precepts I'm going to go through. I probably entitled this uh, lesson, Disproving Hell by Proving Reincarnation in the Scriptures. So, before I get into some of these precepts, I want to bring this one up. Um, give me a second. Oh, let me pull up his name. Oh, nope. Bear with me one moment. In the last days. Ah, Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter 3, verse uh, verse 1. So let me go ahead and read that. Let's see, I'm going to read it in NLT. Second, Second Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. You should know this, Timothy. That in the last days, as we're in the last days right now, there will be very difficult times, okay? And times have been difficult ever since uh, 2020 with the lockdown situation. It's gotten more difficult over the past years and months. And it's only, it's only going to get even more difficult as we proceed into the summer, coming into uh, fall, right? We're just entering the summer, and the summer is the highest you know, point, one of the highest, maybe, if not the uh, most, uh, I guess, uh, prominent season for all kinds of, all kinds of uh, wickedness, man, because the sun's out, people are out, and you know, you know who else is out, the alphabet gang, you know, they're out, so, yeah, this summer is going to be hot in many different ways, but difficulty, poly crises, um, Okay, so going on, it says there will be very difficult times where people will love only themselves and their money, right? And that's really why you have all these damn little heresies popping up out of the woodworks. You know, the Most High hates Jacob now and Esau, so called white man, isn't Esau? All these damn little heresies. Why? It's because it's all about making money. And Jake loves when you repackage things and you. Put a bow tie on it, color it nicely, you know, present it in a way that's that's appeasing to, to the eyes, okay? But guess what? The, the true prophets of the Most High would bring this truth straight. Would bring out the words, the doctrine of Yahweh Shai. They would teach it straightforwardly, with no gimmick, and 100 percent truth, okay, with the correct understanding. So it says, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at Yahweh, Hashem Yoshai, disobedient to their parents, literal parents and spiritual parents. Right? The apostles, okay, of Great Millstone, those are, those are like spiritual fathers, okay? Even to these renegades and rebels, because a lot of them, that you hear these various camps out there, and uh, false teachers and leaders, they learn from the apostles. 
instead of Apostle Tahar on down. Okay? Those, those, those men are, are, are the spiritual fathers of Israel, alongside um, some of the other elders as well. So it says, For my people love the only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at Yahweh's Yahweh Bashim El Shai. Really scoffing at the prophets that are speaking his word, and teaching his doctrine. Disobedient to their parents and ungrateful, they will consider nothing sacred. Right. Everything everything is basically a joke to two thirds. Everything's about entertainment. Right? It says they will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander slander uh, others, right? And have no self control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. And what's good right now? The only thing that's good right now is the doctrine of Yahweh Shai. The true doctrine of Yahweh Shai. This truth. That's the only thing that's good right now in this wicked ass society. Okay, this evil society. So those okay who aren't of the elect are set up to hate what's good, as I just read right here. So that means they're gonna hate the prophets the true prophets of the Most High, okay? They're going to demonize them. And evidently, okay, as prophecy says, they're going to uh, kill some of the prophets, okay? So serious this thing is. So it says, um, yeah, uh, verse 4. Let me just read verse 4. It's locking. Give me one moment here. Okay. There was another one I actually wanted to get. Let me just see if I can find it over for sure. Damnable her heresies. Right? Where was that? Ah, right, Second Peter. Let me get this one up real, real quick. Second Peter, chapter two, verse one. I'll get an NLT straight to the point. It says, "But there were also false prophets in Israel." Okay, this is the main script I want to get. The other one I got was good, but this is the main one concerning damnable heresies. So it says, "But there will be." There were, there were also false prophets in Israel, just as there will be false teachers among you. Right. And it starts with the house of the, of the Most High, right, which is Israel, even among GMS. You know, and we're not afraid to, 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 to say that. It's just the truth. You know, even in Yahweh Shai's camp, you had uh, 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 men crept on unaware, which is, you know, uh, Judas Iscariot. He was crept in unaware. Well, he was a, well. Yahushua was aware of him, right? So, of course, we would have people among GMS that are false teachers as well. They will, but they will be rooted out by the Holy Spirit. Ultimately, they will cleverly teach destructive heresies. You see, and why are these heresies like, for instance, the hell doctrine? That's, as that's what I'm um, touching on today. Why is the hell doctrine so destructive? Because See, Yahweh Shai said what? We, what do you say to Satan? He said, man should not live by bread alone, but by the words, all right, that proceed out of this book. Roughly paraphrasing, so the, by the words of the Most High. So, if you're considered alive by the words of the Most High, all right, considering you have the correct understanding, the complete understanding, that means you're alive in the spirit. You're connected to your source. So when you teach damnable heresies, like the hell doctrine, where there's a place where people are going to go, okay, Israel's going to go and burn forever, that's destructive to the soul of Israel, to their mind. And now you got them believing the wrong thing, which which keeps them disconnected from the Most High, their source, you see? And that's why Ezekiel, okay, he saw, in Ezekiel 37, he saw all these dry bones, right? And he said, and the angel asked him, can these men live? And Ezekiel said, yo, you know who knows if these people can live. They look, they look gone, right? But that's because of how Israel was behaving, right? Because 
of these false teachers in Israel, starting with the leaders, gamble heresies, man. Okay, so they're destructive. It says they will clearly, they will clearly teach destructive heresies, and even deny the master who brought them. In this way, they will bring sudden destruction upon themselves, and that's what the Most High is getting ready to do with these false prophets and false teachers. Bring um, destruction. All right, they're going to bring. He's going to bring destruction upon them. Swift destruction too. Okay, the t the way the Most High is going to judge these guys, these false prophets and teachers. It's going to be swiftly, suddenly, which is going to put, okay, the nation of Israel in check, all right? Put them on their heels, like, God damn, right? And that's just one. Wait until the Most High is going to line. There's a lot of false teachers, a lot of prophets. The Most High is going to line them up, okay? He's going to line them up. They will bring sudden destruction on themselves. Many will follow their evil teaching and shamefully and shameful immorality and because of these teachers the way of truth will be slandered you see and that's what's happening it's because of these false teachers that ultimately the elect will be demonized right because esau all right is just gonna clump all of us together right as he already did on the on the hate group list america's most uh America's top hate group, hate groups. We were number six on that list. GMS, Great Millstone. I think IUIC was number four. Okay, but IUIC doesn't teach 100% uh, the 100 percent truth. They don't teach everything that we teach, right? But because it's close enough, they're just gonna clump us all together. So it says, but anyways, the most high is gonna be with the elect. This is all prophecy. Many will follow their evil teachings and shameful, shameful immorality. Because of these teachers, the way of truth will be slandered. In their greed, they will make up clever lies to get a hold of you, a hold of your money. But Yahweh condemned, condemned them long ago. See, they were already pre, the most I already written that they were going to be condemned based upon what they're doing now. That's pre, that's, that's predestination. Okay. And that alludes into reincarnation. Because why would he do that? Why would he condemn them before they started doing something? It's because they were set up to do it in the first place. And also, from now, where we are now, going back to the ancient world, they've had many lives that they've come back and they were doing the same thing. Teaching damnable heresies. Okay? Because all of us play out our lots. Every generation, every four or five generations, we come back. You play out your lot. You play out your role that the Most High gave you. Okay? So if you, that's how the scriptures say, the spirit of a prophet, okay, is subject to the prophet. So very straightforward. If you're a prophet in your past life, you're going to be a prophet in this life and all the other lives. Okay? If you were a false prophet <laughs> in your past life, you're going to be a false prophet in this life, man, in all your other lives. That's just how it works. There's nothing we can do about it. For those of us who have this truth and have the correct understanding, man, we gotta be we gotta be grateful and show our gratitude every day. Okay. Um Okay. For Yahweh did not spare even the angels who sin. Oh, slack it. Verse three. In their greed, they will make up clever lies to get a hold of your money, but Yahweh condemned them long ago, and their destruction will not be delayed. Period. So it's coming. It's coming, brothers and sisters. It's coming. These false prophets, Most High is going to unleash judgment upon them, man, and it's going to it's going to it's going to bring a tingling in the ears of uh, Israel, just like uh, when the Most High did that with Eli and his sons, okay, in the time of uh, Samuel when he was just a boy. Now let's get into some of these precepts concerning hell. I'm not going to bring out too many. Because I, I don't think you need that many to break down this. Um, scripture say that the elect will be a quick understanding. So, first precept. Oh, Job 3. With Jonah, but Jonah's good too. Job 3. And, uh, where are you here? 
There we go. Okay, so I'm just get right to it. Job three and thirteen. Um, I'm gonna read it to the NLT. See how it goes here. So it says, Job three and thirteen. Had I died at birth, I would now be at peace. I would be I would be asleep and at rest. Okay, so you know you would, you would think he's talking about heaven, actually as he is, right? I would rest with the world's kings and prime ministers whose great buildings now lie in ruins. I would rest with princes rich in gold whose palaces were filled with silver. Okay, so you're getting a category of people that are in heaven, right? There were once kings, governors, princes, so on and so forth, right? And Job himself as a prophet. So verse 15, I would rest with prince. Oh, no. Verse 16, why wasn't I born like a stillborn child, like a baby uh, who never lives to see the light? So miscarriages, right? Verse 17, for in death, the wicked cause no trouble and the weary are at rest. Ah, see, they, kind of, they go off there. The NLT kind of go, goes off here. Right? They don't give you the right idea, okay, as to what's actually being expounded here. So, or proper context, I should say. So let me go into King James. It says there, so this place where Job wanted to go, right? Because he was kind of suicidal after everything he was going through. He wanted the most high to take him back up into the heavens because there's peace there. All right. So it says there, this place, the wicked cease from troubling. And there the weary be at rest. There the prisoners rest together. Aren't prisoners? What's the prisoner? Usually a prisoner is someone who's captive, a slave, but also someone who breaks the law. Right? So according to these damnable heresies, if you break the law and you're wicked and you die, you go to hell. Right? But here, Job is saying that prisoners are in this place of rest. Hell is not supposed to be a place of rest, according to all right, these false teachers. It's a place where you burn forever. That does not sound like rest to me. All right? It says prisoner, captive, bondman, right? Bind, harness, battle, in prison, to be taken prisoner. That's the etymology. Okay? Let's see. Yeah, those which are bound prisoners. Yep. So yeah, prisoner. Okay. Let's go on. What else does it say? It says, There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. Okay. So the main point here, all right, that I want to highlight is verse 17. Why does Job want to go to a place, okay, after he's dead? And this place, even the wicked, find rest there. But I thought the wicked are not supposed to find rest at all once they die, right? They're supposed to go in hell and burn forever. That's a strike right there. So the Spirit is dealing with you. Obviously, that doesn't make any sense. All right, so let's go to Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. Ecclesiastes 12 and 7, and it reads, Okay, so this is the process, right, that we all go through as human beings. It's Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, right, which is our body. After, after we die, it decays and goes back to the earth. And the spirit shall return unto Yahweh, who gave it. Okay, if that's what happens to everybody... Uh, the wicked, where the, the see the Most High is not in hell. That's what I'm going to say. Okay, the Most High is not in this place. Okay, called hell, where you burn forever, and Satan's not there either. Okay, when we die, this is the process. As I'm reading, okay, your body goes back to the earth where it came from, and your spirit goes back to the heavens where it also came from. Everything goes back to its proper order. 
Most High is about order, not confusion. Your body didn't come from the body you have here on earth. Didn't come from the heavens. It came from the earth. So it goes back to the earth. Your spirit that you have in your body didn't come from earth. It came from the heavens. So it goes back to the heavens. Um, verse 7 in the NLT says, For then the dust will return to the earth, and the spirit will return to Yahweh, by streaming of child who gave it. Boom. Next reset. 3 and 16. These 3 and 16. It reads in the King James, And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. All right? The place of judgment, judgment is under the sun. What's under the sun? The earth. Okay? So earth, judgment is played out uh, on earth. The sentence that you get in the heavens, you play that out on earth. It says, and, and moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, right? And uh, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there, right? Because originally, okay, um, the earth, starting with the Garden of Eden, which is Israel, right? Where Jerusalem, the city of peace, right? The teachings of peace and righteousness, which is righteousness, would come from that area, okay? But Jerusalem has been infested with heathens now, okay? And as we were, when we were there in our ancient, or in the... Uh, in the ancient world, right? When we were there as a people, we had our 40 years of uh, peace and whatnot, but we went off, completely off after Solomon. There was a split within the nation of Israel from the Southern Kingdom and the Northern Kingdom. And we just, ever since then, we were just serving other gods. You know, it was always a remnant that would turn back to the Heavenly Father, but eventually we all fell away, okay? So in NLT, how does it say? It says, I also noticed that under the sun there is evil in the courtroom. Yes, even the courts of law are corrupt. <laughs> that's funny. And that's true. Right? This evil this evil happening all the time in the courtrooms. In the courtrooms down here, man. Man, if you get into the whole symbolism behind the courtroom, the magistrates, the judge in his black robe, right? The back and forth between the defendant and the prosecutor. All of that, man, it's witchcraft. All that's witchcraft, sorcery. And it predates going back to even before the flood. Okay? But if you want to, you know, you can go out. You can go back to Meso Mesopotamia, Ur of the Chaldees. All that predates go back there. Okay? I also noticed that under the sun there was evil in the courtrooms. Yes, even the courts of law are corrupt. Yep. Um, let's go. Okay, Ecclesiastes 1. And these are, you know, your basic, your basic scriptures, man. Scriptures that you should be uh, well aware of within your first and second year of the truth, man. You should be well acquainted with these scriptures. So Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, and read to 11. Let's get an NLT first. It says, history merely repeats itself. It has all been done before. Nothing under the sun is truly new. You see? And there's a reason for that. Logically deducing, if history repeats itself, and that's a fact that we're all going to accept, then the next question is why? Well, it would make sense, according to reincarnation, if it's the same people, the same spirits back then, coming back in their life, every four or five generations, it would make sense that history repeats itself, because it's the same people coming back. Okay. So history merely repeats itself. It has all been done before. Nothing under the sun is truly new. Sometimes people say, here is something new. But actually, it is old. Nothing is ever truly new. Yeah. Basically, the concepts and the ideas that are here in our present day, in our society, are all old concepts and ideas. Like your vehicles, cars, concept of travel, of having a uh, a vehicle who are, was already of the old times, past times. You had chariots, you had horses that would uh, carry those chariots, hence horsepower, and so on and so forth. You know, so many different things. Um, verse 11, it says, We don't remember what happened in the past. You see, 
so we don't get our memory uh, in the past, in our past lives. When you know the past life that you live, you don't remember it, and you know rightfully so, man, because righteously so, because we would bug out if you remember all our past lives going back to the time of Adam. So it says, we don't remember what happened in the past, and in the future generations, no one will remember what we are doing now. Yeah, that's the cycle until we get into the kingdom. See, in the kingdom, we're going to have the memory of everything, all our past lives from when we first showed up to the scene to where we are now. And same with all the other nations, man. They're going to know. That's where, you know, that glory and fame of the elect is going to come out of. They're going to remember these are the people who stood stiffly throughout the whole generations. And in, especially in this time, which is the worst generation. This is the most evil time that we've ever been to, been in. On, on, well, this is the most evil time that's ever been on the earth. And it's going to get even more wicked and evil. So, let's keep going. Jonah 2 and 1. Yeah. It's probably my last one. Jonah 2 and 1, it says, Then Jonah... Let me read it NLT. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord Yahweh, his power from inside the fish, right? He was inside the belly of a fish. He said, I cried out to the Lord Yahweh in my great trouble, and he answered me, I called to you from the land of the dead. And the Lord Yahweh, you heard me, right? And so this is this is the thing, man. Our people don't understand the scriptures written, or they overstand rather <laughs> that the scriptures is written in metaphors and parables. And what I mean by overstanding is because they know that the scriptures is written in, meta in metaphors and parables, they uh, they make they make up shit basically, right? They they don't go off of the spirit or what the true teachers, all right which are ordained with the truth, ordained with the Holy Spirit, what the true teachers are teaching. They'll go after their own mind as to what this metaphor means or what this parable is alluding to. And that's where you get all these damnable her heresies, man, instead of following the correct doctrine. That's okay. They're set up to do that, right? So it says in the, in the, in the King James, it says, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, how his power out of the fish's belly? And said, I cry by the reason of my affliction. Right, because he was afflicted. Okay. Unto the Lord Yahweh, and he heard me out of the belly of hell. Cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Let's go into that word hell. Hell. You get the word Sheol, Sheol. Underworld, grave. Hell, pit, underworld, right? And that's where you get that story, right? That's Jake making up that story, Greek, Greek mythology, right? But the grave, that's a proper definition. That's all it is. It's the grave. Um, let's see. It says of the place of exile of extreme... Let's see, let's see here. Bear with me one moment. Grave. Yeah, strongest definition. If people tell you. It says pit. Grave. Okay. Now, see the etymology. That's what you got to do, man. You got to study to show yourself a proof. Choir. Perhaps just very read to grant, make over that one. Okay. Now, I'm going to go into the dictionary and see what it gives us in terms of this word hell. Dictionary. Hell. Okay. It's a good tool I use. This is, it, this is the Eastern Bible dictionary. I use it off the blue layer. But let's go in and see what it says. It says derived from the Saxon Helen. To, to cover, hence to 
hence the covered or the invisible place. In the scripture, there are three words so rendered. Sheol, that's the first word, right? Yeah, we're going into right now. Sheol, it says, occurring in the Old Testament 65 times, this word, Sheol, is derived from a root word meaning to ask, demand, hence, insatiableness. It is rendered grave. Look. It is rendered grave. Oops. So it's not talking about a place where you burn forever. Insatiableness. Let's see. They give you precepts, Proverbs 30 and 15. The horse latchet has two daughters crying, give me, give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, for those, for those things say not. It is enough. Okay. Um, what does it give us for Genesis? Genesis 3. You said I will go down into this. Yeah, let's read this one. This is Genesis 37 and 35. And it and all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted, and he said, Well, I will go down into the grave unto my son's mourning. I think I'm pretty sure this is uh Jacob talking about Joseph. Thus his father wept for him. Okay, so you see in this word Shuel means the grave, it says it is rendered grave. 31 times the reviser have retained this rendering in the historical books with the original word in the margin while in the poetical books they have reversed this rule all right let's see what else it gives us in 31 cases in the authorized authorized version this word is rendered hell this place, the place of disembodied spirits. Okay, but IUIC teaches that you're going to have a body in hell and you're going to burn forever. <laughs> but the dictionary tells you what? Your spirit is going to be down there, which is bullshit. So which one is it? <laughs> it's neither of them. The inhabitants of Shuel, Sh Sh Sheol, are the congregation of the dead. Yeah, because it really goes back to... Uh, a place where they would, where they would um, basically toss out trash, right? Anything that was uh, dis disregarded in the valley, they would put it in there and burn it. Like the Valley of Kedar within uh, Jerusalem, right? Which Kedar means dark, right? It was a dark valley, but it was constantly things were constantly being burnt in there, right? And that's why it was dark. It says it is a. Congregation of the dead. Okay, let's see what else it tells us here. It is the abode of the wicked, be of the good. See, it says Shoel, Sheol is described as deep, dark, with bars. The dead go down to it. Yeah, so it's, it's <laughs> you know, Jake likes to tell stories, man. We were telling stories back then. You know, this is actually a place where. There's actually a gate onto the underworld. Da, 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 da. Right? Now, uh, number two, because it's three, right? So, Sheol was one. We know Sheol means grave. Job 11 and 8 says, It is, a high, is as high as heaven. And canest thou, canest thou do? It says, uh, Deeper than hell. Right? Deeper than the grave. You see? What canest thou know? Right? So, anyways, the next word for hell in the scriptures is the Greek word Hades of the New Testament. In the Old Testament, you'll see Shuel. In the New Testament, you'll see Hades. Of the New Testament has the same scope of significant signification as Shuel. Shuel of the Old Testament, it is a prison where, with gates and bars and locks. And it is downward. See? So it's the same thing as Shuel. Same story. Same story. It's just revised and repackaged. The righteous and the wicked are separated. The blessed dead are in that part. 
of Hades called Paradise. Bullshit. Luke 23 and 43. And Yahweh shall I say unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in Paradise. Yeah, it's talking about heaven and the kingdom of heaven on earth. They are also said to be in Abraham's bosom. Yeah, yeah I'll try to quote that. So the third word is Gehenna. In most of the, uh, most of in the most in most of its occurrence, Salake, in the Greek New Testament, designates the place of loss. Right, and they say they always say. Um, um, they always say that that the tomb, the tomb is the food of secrets, so to speak, or something like that, right? And the reason why I'm saying that is because a lot of people die with inventions and secrets, right? And so when you die, you lose everything. You don't, you can't take anything with you. So it makes sense that they call that place hell, the grave, the place of lost. Right? Uh, the righteous and the wicked are separated. The blessed... Oh, yeah, sorry. Gehenna, in the most of its occurrence in the Greek New Testament, designates the place of the lost. The fearful nature of their condition there is, there is described in various figurative expressions. So... Maybe I'll do a part two, but, you know, there's other dictionaries that go into that word, right? And they might say different things, like the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, right? And it gives you the same thing. See, Sheol, Hades, and Gehenna, right? Um, yeah, they're going to the same thing, cover. Yeah. Yeah. See Gehenna. It says the revised version, British American, British and American. In the case, puts Gehenna in the margin. Originally, the Valley of Hinnom, Hinnom right, which is in Jerusalem. You had three valleys: the Hinnom Valley, the Valley of Kedar, and the Tripeion Valley. I can't really pronounce it well. Right. In those three valleys. Actually, when you look at Jerusalem from an aerial view, form the letter Shem, Shem, right? Which means the name, right? Also means the renown. Um, yeah, the Hinnon Valley, Gehenna, Valley of Hinnon near Jerusalem. Oh, near Jerusalem, Salake. Gehenna became, among the Jews, the cinnamon of the cinnamon. To know him, you know what I mean, for the place of torment in the future life. So it became a story, man. It became a wise tale. Damnable heresy. Tartarus is another word. Look at that. Cast down to hell. Yeah, man. So, anyways, I'm not gonna, I can go on and on about this. A lot of information. But for those of you that are new, you know, do your own research, go into it, various scriptures that that go into uh, hell, as I had them down here. All these scriptures here, so you can screenshot this yourself and go through them yourself and get these, and get the understanding, man, and get acquainted with it. So anyways, with that, I'm going to close by giving all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, and double honor to the apostles, the elders of Green Muslim, who have taught me this word in truth and sincerity. Peace and mercy to the 144,000 and the rest of the hopeful elect that sincerely believe in this truth. All right. So, low world, this is edifying to the elect. I'm going to close by giving up by uh, saying a ball, 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 and call me out to the hopeful elect. Shalom.